member of the uh, What in the World group down at the Senior Center. I first met Bob a few years ago when I returned from Florida and he was in the class. And uh, the comments that uh, Adam made uh, hit me very quickly the very first day that I was uh, chairing this, this meeting. I did not know the name of the ambassador who said it was okay for Saddam to invade Kuwait in 1991. I knew the first name was Alicia. I did not know the last name. And he quickly pointed it out that I was not doing a good job <laughs> in presenting <laughs> American history. And then pulled up the encyclopedia on the computer just to Oh, he verify. got me. So I said, gee, this guy's pretty good, you know. And so I've got to turn around and be prepared. So when I went, starting shortly thereafter, really making lots of notes on the subject material, and even then he nailed me a few times. I made a couple of notes since from when you were talking, they remind me of a couple of things and how Bob was uh, to the point and yet uh, stick by his, his thoughts and his values and back him up. One of them was the car, the red Jetta, the one that uh, war is not the answer bumper sticker. <laughs> Bob had told me he was a bomber in World War II and he bombed uh, several places in France and in Germany and I said, well Bob, you know, we're walking out, why do you drive a Nazi car? And he says, because they make good cars. <laughs> <laughs> so I let that one drop. <laughs> well, last year, we have a gentleman in our group who was uh, a German and lived outside of oh, Munich. Yeah, yeah, we'll get. And uh, he asked a question with Bob. He said, Bob, did you? Uh, he said, oh, yeah, I bombed your town. <laughs> <laughs> I bombed near it. And this and that. Wolfgang said, you bombed my town. I remember as a child my town being blown up. He said, yeah, I was there. And Wolfgang, in a kind of a sort of way, said, Well, thank you very much. And Bob said, You're entirely welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, with that, uh, he did have a sense of humor, I guess, you know. <laughs> and we, as I said to the class, moving right along, you know, before, <laughs> before things got out of hand. But I did want to pick some serious notes on Bob, and I sat down and wrote some things. If you don't mind me reading them, I'll give it my best. I'm too old to memorize all these things. But what started out to me and how to make a few notes on Bob was from uh, Krokoff's book, The Greatest Generation. That was written about the men and the women of World War II and the sacrifices they made on our behalf and the behalf of Americans in the future. So this is dedicated to Bob. And uh, I'll start with, sometimes you meet a man briefly in your life, and yet you know him. You know the character of the man and his compassion for fellow human beings. Sometimes you meet a man whose opinions were strong based on his knowledge of life. Yet he listened, challenged the opinion of others, and always did this with respect. Sometimes you meet a man who thought experience was knowledge, who, correction, Sometimes you meet a man who, through experience, was knowledgeable about the world around him. Yet, he maintained his compassion for others, even while serving his country during the war. Sometimes we pass through life never meeting a man with these qualities. Yet I have, I and many others have, and are grateful that he's passed our way. Sometimes when a man dies and the memory slowly fades, however, the memory of Bob will not fade from us as we continue our journey through life. Thank you for the wonderful memories, Bob. Happy landing when you meet your master. Thank you.